Thursday afternoon I'm bringing you to the park to show you how uh, you can dispense beer in different situations. It's always a good idea before you bring uh, beer out to an event to make sure it's chilled. You can do this by putting it in your kegerator if you got one. If you don't and it's winter time, you can use nature's kegerator, which is the outdoors, or the non-committer. Carve out a shelf, throw it in your refrigerator, put this in overnight, and it will get it down to 5 or 7 degrees Celsius, which is about 40 degrees F. Remember that you're probably going out to a barbecue or a kickball tourney and you've got two, three hours to kill this keg, assuming you go oxygen. A good thermal battery of five gallons at five degrees Celsius will last you those two hours, so you won't have to worry about ice. Everyone thinks when they bring a keg out to a BBQ that they need to, need to bring their expensive CO2 tank, it's heavy, it's cumbersome, and their regulator. It tends to be very expensive. I'm gonna show you some low budget solutions to get you pouring beer at your next event. So if you're sure that your event's only going to last a day or two and you're going to kill that beer within that time frame, you can go ahead and introduce a short-term option. Short-term option is the bike, bike pump party pump. And what that does, it pushes the beer out to the liquid side. It gives pressure and it pushes it out. Something to consider is that it does have a low learning curve and it happens to be a party favorite amongst idiot friends of mine. So again, have your assistant pump up the beer and it will push out the other end. As the keg gets lower, it does get a little bit more difficult to pump, so that's something to keep in mind. But as far as price goes, this was a couple bucks. Learning curve, next to zero. And uh, ease of use, I highly recommend it. Let's take you to another option, the inverted keg option. Invariably, as the barbecue continues into the wee hours, people tend to get inebriated. And uh, some, some wise guy's always got to do his best Dirk Diggler impression with this. So in order to eliminate booze or error, I've devised the inverted keg. The inverted keg is quite simple and it uses gravity as its propellant. So what you have to do is you have to switch the disconnect. So ordinarily on your liquid side, you would have a liquid disconnect, but you're gonna put the gas disconnect on. And what that's doing is that's drawing from the bottom of the keg. At the beginning of your barbecue session, should you go with the inverted keg method, just give a call out to the hummingbird, say, hey, all you gotta do is press the pop it down, beer comes out. So, it's as easy as that, you just open the valve, the beer comes out, and when it stops, you press the disconnect. Remember, it's the liquid disconnect, and the liquid dip tube comes all the way to the bottom, which is now the top. And so, that's, uh, that's residual stuff. Damn. So it lets the beer flow out, no problems, no pump, no issues. Inverting the keg is simple as finding a pole or a tree and finding a couple of ratchet straps, tipping the keg upside down. It is helpful on a full keg, you know, 50 pounds, that you do have a friend help you out, but uh, nothing that isn't unsurmountable. Let's go ahead and take a look underneath and see what the connections look like. Using the inverted keg method is as easy as swapping the disconnects. So over here we have the gas side, the gas post. And remember the gas post is like a little stubby. So what is normally at the ceiling has now become at the bottom of the keg. While on the other side, the liquid disconnect has the long tube that goes all the way to the top of the keg. It's literally as easy as pouring the beer out of the picnic tap and then when you create an airlock, just hit the liquid side disconnect or the poppet. You're allowing air to go in, which allows beer to come out. 